Okay. Okay. So what I basically said for purpose of recording, as I heard already, that orientation is one of the most important programs that one can give. I've been involved in the, uh, the, the giving the, uh, to the vice district governors going for district governor elect and also giving it to the club presidents. Uh, the reason I say that is because we're now recording I just want to make sure that everybody uh, has that in their recording. The organization, as I say, is called the International Association Alliance Club, which is a mouthful. And um, simply we call it Lions Club International or LCI. But in reality, starting next year, we've changed the name, uh, the common brand name to be just Lions International. And uh, we find that's easier for the rank and file members to uh, believe and understand what we are. And also understand that the Lions emblem that you see, receive and are wearing, the lapel pin, has on the very top Lions and on the bottom International. So uh, although we are Lions International and we're not generally using the word clubs, clubs are still very, very important more so because understand that the clubs run the, the district and the state and the members run the clubs and the districts and the state basically are then supported by the international directors. So it's not top down, it's bottom up, so to speak, in that list that members are so very important. And we believe that there needs to be a proper orientation. Today, I heard there's a woman on who just joined, uh, which is great. She just joined in February, was just inducted. So uh, this is perfect for her. And for those who've been through this many times, uh, that is still gonna be beneficial for you as well. We have on the screen right now, a, let me just get to it. Okay, there we go. Um, trying to figure out where you flipped on here. So oh, there we go. So we have a vision, we have a mission, we have a mo motto, and we have a slogan. And I'm gonna work backwards. Backwards because when we have the slogan and the slogan, which is uh, lions, liberty, intelligence, our nation's safety, some people have said that really should be loving individuals offering needed services. And I think that that term really defines more what we do than just liberty, intelligence, our nation's safety. We have a motto that's we serve. And every year the international president will have a theme. And in that theme, there will always be something about we serve. And this year international president's theme is service from the heart. And I bring you greetings, by the way, from Doug Alexander, who's the international president, who's from uh, New York. And he loves these programs with orientation and membership orientation. And uh, he's not able to attend all of them. So I'm here on his behalf and giving you his well wishes. We have a mission. Now the mission that many of the clubs have in their constitutional bylaws or they heard is the old mission. And as of this past year, if you take a look at the standard club constitutional bylaws that clubs that don't have a constitutional bylaws will follow, there is a new mission statement in there. There's a little bit of a mouthful. To empower Lions clubs, volunteers, and partners to improve health and well-being, strengthen communities, and support those in need through humanitarian services and grants that impact lives globally and encourage peace and international understanding. What we're doing is creating a mission now that stands for Lions Club International and also stands for Lions Club International Foundation because we're trying to brand them under the one name of Lions International. And the vision is to be the global leader in community and humanitarian service. And I think that those who are involved with Lions and those in the community who are aware of us will agree that we have met that vision, the mission, the motto, and the slogan. Going on, the next slide will show the Lions International emblem. And you'll notice that that emblem is uh, totally in yellow and blue. And it used to have in the mouth a red tongue, but that has been removed because they felt that a little bit easier for clubs and uh, publications to have just the two colors than have to pay for a third color. Uh, that would be in producing pins or newsletters or whatever. Next slide. We talk about here on the top of the 
pyramid. Next slide. Well, I'll describe it and then we'll catch up to it. LCI, and we have the club, which is the backbone and foundation of our organization. And in that club is members. We then have a district. And in New Jersey, we have district 16N, 16J, 16L. We used to have five districts, A, B, C, D, and E. In my year when I was council chairman in 11, 2011, 2012, we changed from five, we redistrict to three. And that is now NJL, like New Jersey Lions, NJL. Then you have the state, the multiple state and the multiple district. And that is um, 16, MD 16. And then above that there, you have LCI, which is the Lions Club International Board and Officers. There are, in our organization, close to 50,000 clubs around the world. Now, various locations on the internet and Lions Club website, it'll say sometimes 46,000, 47,000. As of last week, it is very, very close to 50,000. And what we have also is 34 board of directors and 12 of them come from the United States. There are six that serve one year, uh, excuse me, serve two years and they go off in the uh, odd or even. And then there is generally five, which would be a total of 11. Because of the COVID and because of missing the international convention two years ago in Singapore, we kept the directors in office for another year. So they served three years. And when it went time for this group to go in, my group in 2021, we have the privilege of having six international directors go in. So there's six still staying on, going off this coming June. And there are six that came in. After this year, there will be 11 and alternating six and five. There are uh, generally one director from Canada, but this year, because again, the COVID, there are two directors from Canada, one going off and one will be on for two years. And taking that place will be somebody coming from Africa and that'll be the new area uh, that they lost out on having a director this year uh, because of the COVID situation. The organization has 750 districts approximately around the world. And in each district, there are sometimes regions. We don't have to have regions, but there are regions. And within regions, we have zones. So sometimes there'll be two zones make up a region or sometimes a few more. Uh, but it's up to each governor if he wants to have regions or zones. And depending on the so-called manpower, uh, depends on how many positions we want to fill or whether we can share that responsibility with zone chairman. And then within those districts, within those clubs, we have community-minded men and women, not just men, not just women. But in 1987, we have our first woman joining Lions Club International. And a few months back, we actually had more women joining our organization than men in that particular month. So things have really progressed. When we look at the district cabinet structure, you will find that there is a district governor and there are also uh, on a line to the side, immediate past district governor, the cabinet secretary, cabinet treasurer, region chairperson, zone chairperson, second vice district governor, first vice district governor. And generally the second vice becomes first, the first vice becomes the district governor, uh, but each one does get elected in each year. We also have other committees and you'll notice in the black blocks there, there are various committees, but I will tell you that there's one committee. Uh, if you uh, go down the line on the left side, it says Marketing Communications Committee. That name keeps changing back and forth every couple of years or so. We voted this past year, the Board of Directors, that it's gonna be just the Marketing Committee and uh, documents have not yet caught up to show that Marketing Committee is the name. I actually sit on the Lions Club International Marketing Committee the chairman is from France, the vice chairman is from India. There is a member also from Scandinavia, and then there's me. Uh, 
And we work on grants, advertising, budgets. We work on international convention. We decide who's going to be speaker, who's going to be the uh, entertainment. Uh, we do the marketing uh, and we are also in pretty much involved in so many, many areas of lionism with a huge budget. Uh, but that is one of the responsibilities that the market committee has. The next picture shows that in 1917, the organization was formed by Melvin Jones. And that was really the second attempt to form Lions Clubs. And uh, it, there was once before Royal Order of Lions and it failed after a short time period. But when something fails, you don't just give up. And Melvin Jones then, who is our founder, never was he a club president. Uh, and never, I mean, never was he the president of the organization, but he was the founder. Uh, he helped form this organization. You notice back then, they were all men. As I mentioned in 87, we no longer just have men in the organization. Next is a very, very important slide to me. In 1920, New Jersey basically formed its first Lions Club. We became international with the first Lions Club, Canadian Club, that was the Windsor Lions Club. And then along comes the Camden Lions Club, December 15, 1920. And the Camden Lions Club is very famous for being the home of the world's, the world's first drive-in theater, the uh, first condensed soup, Campbell Soup, and a few other things we're famous for. But one of the things we're also famous for, you'll see later on, is Harold P. Nutter was past international president. He served in 1951-52. He was from my club. And as a young kid coming with my father to Lions Club meetings, I got the privilege of meeting Harold Nutter, who was very influential in the Lions Club organization. The next picture, 1925, Helen Keller challenged the Lions to become the Knights of the Blind. And Benjamin Jones was the president, and he was from New Jersey. So among the top first presidents was from New Jersey. We've had a great impact on Lionism. And... Helen Keller, who was blind and hearing impaired uh, or deaf, uh, believed that lions could become the Knights of the Blind. And we took on as our goal and our projects, blind and visually impaired, and also those with hearing impairment as well. Next Can I picture. Play the video? Can I yes. play the video? You need to play the video? Yes, please. This is the reenactment of uh, Helen Keller's speech. Dear lions and ladies, I suppose you have heard the legend that represents opportunity as a capricious lady who knocks on every door but one. And if the door isn't open quickly, she passes on never to return. And that is as it should be. Lovely, desirable ladies won't wait. You have to go out and grab them. I am your opportunity. I am knocking at your door. I want to be adopted. The legend doesn't say what you are to do when several beautiful opportunities present themselves at the same door. I guess you have to choose the one you love best. I hope you will adopt me. I am the youngest here, and what I offer you is full of splendid opportunities for service. 
try to imagine how you would feel if you were suddenly stricken blind today. Picture yourself stumbling and groping at noonday as in the night. Your work, your independence gone. You have heard how from the fingers of another a ray of light from another soul touched the darkness of my mind and I found myself, found the world, found God. It is because my teacher learned about me and broke through the dark, silent imprisonment which held me that I am able to work for myself and others. The opportunity I bring to you, lions, is this. Will you not help me hasten the day when there will be no preventable blindness? No little deaf blind child on top. No blind man or woman unaided. I appeal to you, lions, you who have your sight, you who are strong and kind and brave. Will you not constitute yourselves as knights of the blind in the crusade against darkness? Thank you. Thank you. So as you heard, we took on blind and visually impaired and sight and hearing. And uh, as years have gone on, we've also uh, progressed into other uh, focuses as well, uh, which we'll discuss later on. I want to bring up uh, an answer to a question that was in the chat room. Uh, somebody said uh, they thought 1415 is when we became NJNL. The answer is uh, yes, that was the first year that we had uh, district governors NJNL prior years with ABCD and E, but it was approved in uh, my year in 2011 12, and that was when it was voted on. But we needed a uh, phase in period uh, so that we would be able to uh, easily and logistically move into the three sub districts. Uh, you'll hear now there's a picture of. Um, we also were involved in the drafting of the United States, uh, United Nations Charter, excuse me. And uh, we are one of the nine government organizations. And every year we have a Lions Day at the UN or with the UN. Um, it used to be in the UN, but right now because of COVID and other security reasons, uh, we're not in the building in the UN for a meeting. It'll be at the Westin uh, Hotel and various members of the UN will then come and speak with us. Uh, there are quite a few people who have been on the um, uh, program, who attended the program, participated in the program, both on speakers and also being there as well as participants. But it's a great organization, great activity. And um, we've been very, very involved with the uh, Lions uh, organization involved with the UN. And there are various times where the UN will come to us and ask us to do things that maybe they can't do because we can cross political borders and boundaries because we're in over 200 countries um, and geographical areas. The number that we are involved in Lions actually exceeds the number of geographical areas in the UN by a small number. 
if you go to the next slide, it shows in 1957, a, a program was created and that was called the Leo program. And the first club I believe was in Pennsylvania in Abington. And you have here a picture of a gentleman who was the first Leo lion, I believe, or excuse me, first Leo. And um, do we have some words of him? Yes. They had a, uh, and I think both my, my dad, his name is James Graver and, and, um, and Bill Ernst uh, served on, they had a, what they called a youth committee. There were a number of committees that the club had, but this was a youth committee. And I think they were, they were looking, they were looking for a project. Well, long about that time, uh, I had uh, moved on from the junior high on to high school. Uh, Abington. This would have been the fall of 1956. So then we go into, so that would be my first year there. And one of the things that I noticed um, at that particular time, this was 56, 57, there, the other service clubs that I was aware of, like the, uh, the Kiwanis Club, they had a junior service club that was active. It was, uh, I think it was, there, there was a, a wheel club and there was a key club. And I can remember ha having, I don't know, one day I was just talking with my, my dad and I said, you know, it's interesting that these other service clubs have, they have these junior service clubs at the high school and um, Lions, are the, Lions don't have one. And I, I think that that little conversation that we had, you know, kind of sparked his interest. So I think he took that back to the committee and, and they talked about the idea of um, establishing a, 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 a junior Lions club. It didn't have a name at that point. It was just the idea that, um, and so there was probably a little, you know, probably a little competitive interest on their part. They, you know, they, they would have, they wanted to see uh, uh, lions uh, have a have a presence there at the high school. So anyway, they did, and uh, it was, uh, that was 1957. <laughs> Okay, next slide, please. Oh, there you have it now. Perfect. In 1968, the Lions Club International Foundation was established. Now, Lions Club's organization itself is a 501c4 organization. And the foundation is what we call a 501c3 organization. So when somebody wants to make a contribution to Lions, so to speak, it's made through the Lions Club International Foundation known as LCIF. When it first was formed in 1968, it was only either the international or club that presented LCIF Melvin Jones fellows, but now it could be purchased by making a donation. Either the club makes it for you or you make it for yourself or even people who are not involved and related to Lions Club can help contribute to somebody becoming a Melvin Jones fellow. The uh, next level is a progressive Melvin Jones Fellow. And every time you make a contribution or one made in your name, you get another stone on a pin. And the color of the pin changes colors from gold, white gold, and back and forth. And it has different stones of rubies and diamonds and emeralds and turquoise, you name it. I mean, there's different stones. And um, you can get that pin that helps signify your commitment to the organization. Um, I think that we have other slides on here later on. Let me see if there's the next one or not. We'll come back to this, but, we'll, oh, good, it's a couple of down. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. So the LCIF organization foundation 
it does have uh, its own links that you can go into and find out more about it. They make it easy now to make contributions. It can be done online. It doesn't have to just be printed out and sent to Lions Club International. But if your club is going to make a contribution, they really should do it as soon as possible because anybody thinking right now of honoring a individual to be honored at the state convention or in their club or a community, whatever, it, there's a backup of a couple of months to make the plaque and also get them out. So you do not want to delay. I didn't mention it last night when I gave the seminar to the presidents, but many, many, many clubs have in their account unnamed recipients. So the club might have three or $4,000 that they can use that money and have a member become a Melvin Jones fellow or pick the mayor or somebody involved in the community or another honor, an honored citizen and also make that person a Melvin Jones fellow, putting a notice in the newspaper and having a luncheon or a dinner in that person's honor. That also advances Lions Club International. In 1987, the Lions International became the first service club organization to admit women. And that certificate there, is that for the first uh, woman? That's right. Okay. And we also have a video. You have a video. Go ahead, please. So one Tuesday, one of my judges came by and invited me to join him for lunch. He was going to Hotel Texas where the Lions Club met at noon every Tuesday. Well, I knew it was a male organization, and I thought, well, how nice of him to extend the courtesy. I'm, I'm delighted to go. So we went, had lunch, met a lot of his friends, about 125 men in the room. And it was a nice visit. I, I enjoyed it. The next week, he came by my office, and he said, Suzanne, come go to lunch with me again. This time, bring your checkbook. I said, well, I guess he wants me to buy lunch, okay. I said, what am I gonna do? And he said, when we arrive, the secretary is gonna be at the meeting today and he's gonna bring an application and we'd like you to fill out that application and put a check along with it. And we want you to be the first female to be a member for sure in our club, hopefully the state of Texas and maybe maybe the world, but we've got to get it in today to get, to get your name on the books. And so I did. And here we are in 2021 talking to you this morning as uh, I'm, I'm still around and I'm still going strong. Great, thank you. In 1990, we started a fundraising so project. Oh. Uh, we launched a fundraising project called Campaign Straight First. I mentioned Larry Ragon earlier this evening and coincidentally, Larry Ragon was the chairman of uh, the campaign site first for the state of New Jersey at that time. It was a very successful program. And we then launched campaign site first uh, two. And the program that we're now in right now is called campaign 100. And we're trying to raise $300 million. We're about 85% there. And we're looking for everybody to get involved. We're asking clubs to get involved. Uh, in becoming model clubs, which means an average of $500 per person has been contributed. Many clubs, unfortunately, can't hit that level. Some have actually have already hit it and don't realize they hit it because we're going retroactively for a few years in counting your contributions during that obligation. And if one club wanted to become a model club now, they have three more years in, in which, which to reach that uh, amount of money. For those clubs who, for some reason, can't become model clubs, we're asking those clubs to consider becoming 100% participatory clubs. And that means each member, not an average, but each member donates $50. And by each member contributing $50, the club can become a 100% contributory club. So I'd like you to go back to your clubs and see if your club can at least get each member to contribute $50 and become a contributory club member, or at least maybe a model club as well. In 2017, a medal was issued, and that medal was the uh, international uh, 100 years of uh, being a Lions organization. It got approved by legislators in the government, federal government, approving this. And 
Um, the vote came down to needing one more person. And at that point, I got a call from Lions Club International asking me if I would call my Congressman Andrews and see if I could get his support because we needed one more vote for it to be approved. Uh, Congressman Andrews from the Camden County area, I happened to know his chauffeur's cell phone number because I had had him speak many times to my club. I called his cell phone. He then got uh, Congressman Andrews on the phone who then went and voted and he became the deciding vote that we got the approval to have this coin minted. And uh, you then could purchase that coin. You still can get them probably on eBay. I don't think International has any more, I'm not sure. Uh, but that is a real nice, it has Melvin Jones on one side. And on the other side, it has a male and female uh, lion. And on the bottom, it also has a, uh, a cub, a Leo, so to speak. So you have the three different levels, male, female, and Leo, which can also be male, female. Next picture. Well, so the first Lions Club in New Jersey is the Camden Lions Club. We celebrated 100 years. We have three districts. And the first year to have three districts was under Council Chairman, uh, Mahesh, it was uh, Council Chairman uh, Winster Savalas. And uh, that was the 2014-15. Again, it was approved in 2011-12. We have a current membership of over 4,000 members and clubs, we have 167 clubs. So that's throughout the state. Always looking for more clubs. Clubs can be an area. It can also be a specialty club. We have ethnic clubs. We have a Pensacola Korean Lions Club. We have the Lansi Bangladesh Lions Club. We have various clubs uh, of Asian ancestry and we have specialty clubs of Special Olympics. We have a physical fitness Lions Club. We have a new club, which I was involved in the uh, induction of officers, installation of members and presenting of their charter, which is the Artist Lions Club. So you can have different specialties. And when I was in Wisconsin last week, I was discussing specialty clubs. They did not have one, uh, or they, they have a branch club with Special Olympics. Next picture, please. So uh, the next picture you have is a picture first of Benjamin Franklin Jones. As I mentioned, I believe he was from the Newark Club, 1925-26. And we have Harold Nutter, H-A-R-L-O-D, uh, I said H-E-R-L-O-D, but Harold Nutter, president, 1951-52. Next picture, we have here the luxury of having some past international directors. And we have Waylon Kramer, and he was from the Camden Club. We have, uh, second was Harold Nutter from the Camden Club. Third, Herbert uh, Burham, um, who actually ran for uh, third vice president and was not successful. We have William McCormick, and these are now people that I knew and met uh, in my early stages of lionism. And we have William McCormick there. Max Strub. Max was also the state secretary and uh, ran the office. State secretary was a precursor of what we call state advisor now. And then we had John Swantek from the Pemberton Township Lions Club. We have Gordon Post from the Denver Lions Club. And when Gordon retired and moved out west to Arizona, uh, he gave me all his uh, club banners that he had received when he was international director. Then we have Chuck Weimer, who, as I mentioned before, along with Larry Rigon, were my mentors. I would drive Chuck Weimer to cabinet meetings and various meetings when he got to the point where he couldn't drive his own. And then the next picture highlighted, we have Stan Grossman from the Springfield Lions Club. These are directors and, and current uh, PIDs and, and current directors who are still alive. We have Stan Grossman, 1999, 2001. We have Bob Moore, 2005, 2007. 
We have Mel Bray, 2015, 2017, and yours truly, uh, you have me, 2021 to 2023. Next slide, international conventions. So we have one here, uh, to 1923, the seventh convention. And uh, these were conventions, by the way, which were in Atlantic City. So we have 1923, 1951, 1955, 1961, as I mentioned, I attended my first convention as a five-year-old at International Convention. Then there was the 1970 convention. And the next page, we're showing the next International Convention. And we have one here, Montreal, 2022, it was supposed to be New Delhi, India, but because of the uh, COVID virus, we moved it to Montreal, which was supposed to be last year, and that became virtual convention. The following year is Boston, then Melbourne, Australia, 2025 is New Mex is uh, Mexico City, 2026 Atlanta, Georgia, 2027 Washington D.C., 2028 Singapore, and. I've heard mixed comments that the 2029 is gonna be New Delhi. When we canceled it uh, in 2022, we were postponing it. We weren't just canceling it. I've heard some people say that it is New Delhi. Uh, I can tell you that the board of directors has not seen that yet. We have a board of directors coming meeting coming up in April and I'm sure they'll put it to a vote and uh, most likely it'll pass. But those are the next international conventions. When you are a member, anybody can attend international conventions. And the one in Montreal would be truly pleasurable to attend since we haven't had a in-person convention for a couple of years. And uh, you can make application now. There is a reduced rate for making application that goes until March 31st. I'm gonna have a board meeting in Montreal and after the board meeting, I'll have the international convention. So I'm gonna be in Montreal about 13 days uh, comes June, uh, conducting my business uh, virtually, so to speak from Canada. Next picture, please. We also have Lions Day, uh, Canada, USA Canada Lions Leadership Forums. And uh, this coming year will be Calgary and the following year, Reno, and then Louisville, Kentucky, and Atlantic City, New Jersey, 2025. The uh, one in Louisville was uh, canceled during the COVID, so we have rescheduled it for there, and we vote. The vote is it's presented by a committee brought to the International Board of Directors, and the Board of Directors will then have a discussion and vote on where we're going to be. After we had this discussion, the vice presidents and the other members of the directors uh, turned to me and asked me if I would like to make the resolution, which was nice because I got to make the resolution for the forum coming to New Jersey, coming to Atlantic City. The committee did a fantastic job, the New Jersey committee, uh, mostly consisting of Dale Bell and uh, Albert Elizzi, both past council chairman. Uh, they did a, a tremendous presentation. The city of Atlantic City tremendously helped. Uh, I believe they offered $65,000 to be able to use as the International uh, Forum Committee sees fit. Our delegation will be in one location. Many other times the convention or the forum location is one building and we have to pay lots of money for that building. And the delegation stays in three or four different hotels. And there is buses, a whole system set up to take people back and forth from their hotels to the convention center. When we're in Atlantic City, we're going to be at Harris. It will have one building that we will not have to travel back and forth to different hotels. We will be in one facility so we don't have to pay for a large convention center. We're gonna have that extra money we're gonna give them to us by the Tourism Bureau. We're going to also uh, not have to have the bus transportation system. We will not have a 
major expenditure that we would have had in other locations. And again, Atlantic City got approved for the 2025 forum. We're gonna be looking for all clubs and members to help us. We're gonna need about 200 plus members to in, be involved at that forum, greeting other lions, maybe transporting them back and forth from an airport or, or whatever, uh, being there to give them directions on where to find things, uh, being there in sessions to help make sure books and materials are given out. So New Jersey is going to have a great impact with the Lions Canada, uh, USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. Uh, if we are one room right now, I'll be asking you all to raise your hand and say who's been there before. And many of you have been there, uh, but it'll be a tremendous time. And also participating will give you a in that you normally don't get when you come to these forums. And the next picture shows the uh, state convention headquarters, but um, that doesn't look like, right, that's not Harris, that's Tropicana, right? Because this year's state convention in May is going to be at Tropicana instead of Bally's. Tropicana and Bally's uh, got bought and Bally's went to one company and Tropicana went with us to Harris. So we have the same company with Harris and the Tropicana, it'll be a fantastic location. We have a speaker coming in, an international director coming from California, uh, Ken Abara from the San Francisco area. He and his wife, Amy, will become and be our speakers. As an international director, we travel a lot and we go around to different states and communities and speak on behalf of Lionism, on behalf of our international director. And we also, motivate, inspire, and educate those we meet. Uh, in um, October, I was in uh, Maryland. In November, I was in New York. In January, I was in Minnesota. February, I was in uh, Wisconsin, coming up in about a week in Nebraska. In March, uh, I'm going to Tennessee, then Iowa, then Louisiana, and the following month, Hawaii, then Texas, and then the following month, Pennsylvania, and, and so on and so forth. And it starts again and goes for another year. So we're constantly traveling as an international director, going around. But I made sure that I was going to be available to be able to come to our state convention, May 19th, May 21st. So I'd like you all please to go back to your club and uh, get the documents. You can actually download, uh, I'm not sure if it's on our website yet for the state. If not, it will be there shortly. But consider coming to the convention. Uh, if you can come Thursday night to the cocktail party, that's great. If you can come Friday, that's great. If you come the whole weekend, it's fantastic. Uh, but most of the activities are really on Saturday and Saturday night. We have a banquet as well when we welcome the incoming uh, council governors and we thank the outgoing council governors as well. I think that was the last slide there. Okay, I want to uh, cover uh, a couple other items here, please. You'll notice as a lion that we often wear various shirts, hats, pins, lapels, whatever it may be. Um, there is a club supply store that's located in Oak Brook. You can contact your club secretary if you want to order something. And sometimes you actually order your own, but they rather go through the club secretaries because then we have a better way to make sure that the bill get paid. But if you wanted to purchase something and pay for it at the same time, there is a procedure in which you can do so. The uh, staff in Oak Brook, uh, we've been cutting back our staff because we're trying to save money. We've been reallocating jobs and responsibilities and wherever we can save a dollar, we have been trying to do that. We have a potential dues increase. Uh, it's gonna be voted on in Montreal. And if it gets approved, then we're looking for international dues increase of $3 for 2023, 24, and then $2 for the following year extra and two more dollars after that. So it'll be a total increase of $7. That amount is still much lower than what Kiwanis charge, what Rotary charges. So our dues are very competitive, but we understand that all organizations, especially in the United States, these service organizations are all suffering and trying to find members. When we get new members, it is an honor becoming a member. You get asked to be a member. We'd like you, when you become a member, to be involved in the club, to take on responsibilities, 
to attend as many meetings as you possibly can attend, to, if you can attend district and zone meetings, come to a convention or two. We ask you to maybe consider making contribution to LCIF. We want you to go out and also ask somebody else to join as well. We need more members. More members means more hands. More hands means provide more service. And when you become a member of the Lions Club, we also want you to provide whatever service you can provide. Be involved in the club activities. Don't be afraid to come up with new ideas. There might be a lion or two who says, no, in my day, that didn't work. Well, things change. And we need to keep trying and keep on doing that. We also need you to pay your dues. And the club, the district, the state, international, all rely on dues being paid so we can provide services at those different levels. And if you don't pay your club dues, it becomes a domino effect. It makes it difficult for the club, for the district, and for the state to pay their dues. So we need you to be involved. We need you to participate. We need you to attend activities like this. And hopefully this will become an annual event, not just for the state, but in your district as well. You have a sponsor. Feel free to go to that sponsor anytime you have a question. Go to the president. Go to any district, any zone officer, any regional officer, any state officer, any international officer, and any other member in your club. Because we want you to be the most informed, most involved, and most inspired. I've been a member myself, as you heard, since 1984. It is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Jeff. All right. Uh, the next one, the next presentation is from past council chair Mahesh Chitnis. Mahesh, your video is still off. Yeah, not the not the presentation, but I just wanted to update on a couple of things that we have. Uh, do we have a council chair Armando on call? He is here, yeah. Yeah, so let him speak. He wanted to talk about something. Great. Thank you to PCC, to Mahesh, to, and I did, uh, Jeff, uh, I mean, the, we have the, so many the individuals that we have, uh, uh, have so much knowledge of Lionism, and we are the, blessed to have all of you to hear. Uh, today, I want to uh, just uh, reflect the, and talk about the, the Lions Day the, in New Jersey. And we're going to have that uh, on uh, April the 23rd in, in the morning. And we'd like uh, uh, to have all the clubs in MD-68 uh, participate. Uh, and uh, our, our slogan is, let's clean up New Jersey. All right. And we're looking to the, the main streets of the, and the towns of the, to get more exposure. For, uh, for the Lions and want to include the, the mayors of each town to be notified that, that, so they could uh, play an important role with it in, in uh, this cleanup. Each town that will uh, help out uh, by donating the, the garbage the bags at the, and the gloves at the, and the canes at the, to uh, pick up uh, the garbage. By getting the, the elected officials involved, it, it becomes a big deal. You know, and that's the, the key by making it a big deal and it all has to come is from you, from the clubs, from the, the governors. And what we're talking about it is not selling the steak, we got to sell the sizzle. So by selling the sizzle, okay, it makes it big and we want it, it, it to be a big Lions Day so everyone if it gets recognized. So New Jersey, everyone in the area knows what the Lions are all about, right? So uh, we want everyone's participation. And we wanted to set up the tables that, so we can have uh, individuals actually register the new members because by us being out there, being active, many people are gonna be saying, what do we have to do to also participate? Especially like for instance, in my town in Hillside, I already got the, the the council members involved, I already got the, the mayor involved. They're looking forward to it, they're the excited and we're looking there to clean up at the town. So, you know, the, and when you actually the, go out and you speak to the, to the elected officials in your town, they're for it, right? Who doesn't want a clean town? 
And who doesn't want the, their streets to be clean? And the Lions are there to volunteer to do that. <laughs> so it's exciting. Um, I'll be there collaborating with, them, with all the Lions in, in the, each of the districts at the, and participating at the, all the, the line leaders the, from each district uh, as coordinators, such as the, the, the IDs, KIDs, the governors, the PDGs, the zone chairs, uh, VDGs, the region chairs. Um, and we want everyone to be involved. We want everyone to play a part if they, in if they, this if they, uh, Lions and Leos of the day if in New Jersey, all right? So the, the Leos that are playing an important part, okay? We're looking to all, for all of us to collaborate and work together. And uh, talking about Leos, they, we wanted them to be Leos for the day, L-E-O, all right? Let's enjoy ourselves. We need that to all work together and collaborate. And by all of us harnessing it, our energy and making it the, the, this the day work, we definitely are gonna have a lot of publicity and the new members that they will have to be respected in their areas as well. With a little bit of inspiration and perspiration, we will have a successful day. So let's have to enjoy ourselves and let's serve from the heart. And we're gonna be getting at the, these at the, uh, uh, flyers out uh, hopefully to buy the, this Saturday. All right, so we're gonna be sending them out to, to all the clubs. With that, we're looking for everyone to participate. We're looking for everyone to collaborate. And let's go and enjoy yourselves. And don't forget about the sweetheart dance that we can also enjoy ourselves in the evening as well. Thank you so much. All right. And let's continue to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to go over a couple of questions and comments that are in the chat box. I've just now had a chance to review. It was difficult to see all the screens at the same time. Uh, as far as LCAF is concerned, let me point out that for 16N, you can contact uh, past council chairman Winster or past council chairman Jack Romano. Um, for 16J, past district governor Dawn. Uh, for 16L, past council chairman Al. Uh, and they will have the dollar amounts for each club and what one needs in order to get the uh, model club category. And as I said, there are clubs out there already that may take just a small amount or have already accomplished it. They just need to sign up and become that. We have in our state, as Dawn has pointed out to me, a 400% model club. That's fantastic. And I just heard from Cash that the West Windsor Lions Club is going to be a 200% visionary model club. A question that one said was about life membership. A way to honor an outgoing uh, president is to make that person a Melvin Jones Fellow. And especially if there's funds already that your club has given that hasn't named somebody as a Melvin Jones Fellow, that uh, that could be given to the outgoing president. And another award one can give is a life membership. And to get life membership in Lions Club International, there are certain requirements one needs to meet. One of them is any member in the club who's maintained active membership as a Lion for 20 years or more, or any member of a club who's maintained such active membership for 15 or more years and is at least 70 years old. Then any member of a club who's critically ill, doesn't matter how long that person has been a member and has rendered outstanding service to his or her club, his or her community, or the association may be granted life membership in the local club upon recommendation of his or her club and payment to the association of $650. So, you can become a life member there. You also become a life member, if you want, of Lions Eye Research Foundation, LERF, or Lions Eye Bank of Delaware Valley. They have life memberships as well. Let me see if there's any other questions before I turn it back over to Mahesh. I'm sorry, let me see, I see some chats here. Thank you, thank you, very informative. I think, We've hit the questions. And by the way, I'd like to point out that um, when I ran for international director, Marianne Rigone, who's on today, uh, actually gave my speech online for Lions uh, Virtual. And uh, we were allowed two minutes to make a presentation. And Marianne spoke for about one minute and 45 seconds. And believe it or not, I was able to keep my speech down to 10 seconds. <laughs> That is truly unbelievable. But yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else? That's amazing for a lawyer. 
<laughs> yeah. I just wanted to that. talk about one more event that is coming up. Uh, we are not ready to officially announce yet, but I can sort of give a sneak peek to this group. Uh, we will be having, uh, we will attempt to break a world record for chain of eyeglasses on uh, 1st of May this year, thanks to uh, ID Jeff and his uh, team of uh, the marketing committee. They approved us a uh, uh, Lions Club International grant for marketing that is helping us in uh, having a big, big event. Uh, we intend to uh, have a chain of uh, 100,000 eyeglasses, uh, which will break the existing record by almost five times. Uh, so we are working on that. Uh, we are still not signed up a couple of places that we need to do the contracts, et cetera. But once the contracts are done, uh, we would be announcing that probably by beginning of March, uh, middle of March. And the event would be on 1st of May. We would need as many volunteers as we can we have to uh, connect 100,000 eyeglasses in three hours. So we need a lot of people. So please uh, tell your clubs, uh, bring your family, bring your kids, and let's sort of have a, a mega news making event that we will all remember for the rest of our lives. Let me point out that Lines International has grants that we give $15,000 to multiple district, $5,000 to a single district. And uh, in the fall, I was listening and voting on $100,000, $200,000 worth of grants. I quickly ran back, but I didn't run, but I quickly uh, contacted our people in our state and told them that if they put together an application to be, and get it in within a week or two, uh, that we would be able to hopefully get a $15,000 grant. And that was put on the agenda. I made sure I spoke on it and then recluse myself from the vote because uh, of having a little bit of conflict of interest there. And of course, uh, we, we were able to get a $15,000 grant for New Jersey. Uh, so that was a, a nice little thing that we were able to do. And it's a great, great program. And once we're in the Guinness World Record, uh, hopefully we'll be there for a long, long time. And it'll add a lot of publicity to our state as well. I will also point out of all the grants, I would tell you that the marketing committee absolutely was fascinated with that idea. And in some of their audiovisual programs mentioned about the Guinness contest that we're gonna be involved in. So uh, a great, great um, uh, honor for New Jersey. And thank you, New Jersey, for doing what you're doing. I also wanna mention that um, when I talk about LCIF, uh, Kevin is the chairman for 16J. Dawn is the multiple district chairman for LCIF. Let me see if there's any other chat comments here. I do want to thank the lion from Barbados, I believe it is, who's actually been involved now for uh, two or three nights and, and coming and uh, it's nice to see not only uh, new lions, but old time lions as well. And I also see uh, Lori Gill, hi Lori, and uh, her husband was a district governor in 16L. We have with us, besides Council Chairman Armando and past Council Chairman Mahesh, we have past district governor and state parliamentarian uh, Brad Day. And we have also with us past Council Chairman Jack Romano. Oh, right there. I, we have international, past international director Bob Moore. Uh, and I will also say he's one of my mentors as well, especially after the, the death of uh, Chuck Weimer. Uh, but uh, Bob always made me feel good. I call him a PID, Pastor National Director. And uh, before I got approved, he uh, voted and elected. He would call me FID, uh, Future International Director. So uh, Bob is here. Bob gave the orientation last month, I believe. Is that correct? Right. He's nodding. Okay. And... Um, we also have uh, past District Governor Dawn. We have past District Governor Mary Ann Ragone. And we have, let me see anybody else on here, not going down to the Vice District Governors or Cabinet Secretaries or Cabinet Treasurers and all that kind of stuff, because uh, there are also many on here as well. But I think I've covered 
the highlight of um, the, that category in our state. I'm also wearing a shirt um, and this shirt is the shirt that was um, given out at the, uh, or your boy, nothing ever gets given out. But this was the shirt for the international convention. It's a, uh, looks like a Hawaiian type shirt. And I can assure you that when I wear it at the uh, board meeting coming up in Hawaii, that I'll be in April, uh, I'll be wearing this shirt. Uh, although I have worn it now for the last two uh, seminars. So uh, it will get washed. Okay, uh, Mahesh, you're on Council Chair, Pass County Chairman Mahesh. Sure. Um, is everybody uh, in for a quick Kahoot quiz? If you are, uh, you can log into Kahoot.it. Open, open your browser, open on your phone, uh, put uh, in the br your browser, Kahoot, K-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Oh, I was about to put it and I think uh, Anu has already put that in. And once you, once you log in there, I'll give you the pin, I'm a little behind in this. And then you were past council chairman, in the past uh, cabinet secretary, past cabinet treasurer. I am just a lion, but I was no, a, no, but you, uh, count, were you, but were I was you, a cabinet secretary. Yes. Yes. Okay, right. Okay, you're past cabinet secretary. Okay, we're all just lions, in fact, most of my emails and, and documents will have lion Jeff Gans and then ID because the lion came first. I'm always a lion and that's what's important. The title is afterwards. All right, I am ready to host the Kahoot. So if you are logged into Kahoot, please put in the pin. 811-4019, 811-4019. And just remember, we are not playing for nothing. Uh, since we have uh, our avid pin collector, Jeff, our uh, presenter today, uh, the winner of this will get a limited edition Pin, uh, that will be sent to the winners. So please try to, uh, when you're choosing the, uh, the, the Nick name, please choose the name that we can recognize. Yeah, and uh, PID Bob Moore is very competitive. Very competitive? <laughs> <laughs> The, yeah. the pin again is 811-4019. We'll start the quiz, but if you feel like you can join anytime, and this quiz is nothing about uh, your memories. Like we are going to talk about, the, the quiz is only, only about what we discussed today. So everything that we talked about, um, yeah, like ID Jeff just talked about. By the way, I forgot to mention, I see on the list here, past Councilor Sherman Winster is on as well. All right, so let's, let's start. The first question. Where will be USA Canada Alliance Leadership Forum in 2025. Red, Atlantic City. Blue, Calgary. Yellow, Reno. And green, Washington, DC. And yes, everybody who replied, replied right. It is, it is going to be in Atlantic City. 
In 2022, the uh, forum is going to be in Calgary. So be ready, st start uh, uh, planning for going to Calgary for the forum this year. Before and we have all your we have all your names, so we're hopefully you'll be in Atlantic City with us. Yes, absolutely. And we have to we have to take people to uh, uh, Calgary and Reno also, so that yes. uh, they will know what to expect here. Next, like before, next question: the leaderboard. Um, Mike Edge was the fastest. Just a lion uh, was second fastest. Glenn, D, and KL uh, are on the leaderboard. Next question. Where is the next international convention? Is it in Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, or Boston? Red Calgary, blue Toronto, yellow Montreal, and green Boston. Yes, it is in Montreal. And by the way, you can take a train there or fly there or drive there. And yeah. 1996, we had our last convention in Montreal. My wife and I took the train there and uh, it's easy to get to. Uh, it's it's, it's five-hour drive, so all of us can go. The I had to throw in Toronto because the, the Toronto is the one when uh, when I became a district governor, that is where we had a convention. And uh, the last time we were in Boston, it was going to be New Orleans, and they had the, uh, the the hurricane and the flood, and we moved it with very short notice to Boston. Okay. So there is a little bit of change in leaderboard. Just uh, New Jersey Lion moves up. Uh, I think he just exchanged a position with, or he or she exchanged position with Mike Etch. Let's have the next question. True or false? First woman was inducted in Lions Club in 1968. True or false? Blue, true, and red, false. Yes, it is false. She, uh, like the first woman was inducted in 1987. And that is also like a little bit of a trick question. Uh, when we had our first convention in 1917, we did have uh, women attending that convention as lions. So the, the wording should be the first woman in the new era was in 1987. D has a streak of three correct answers in a row. Uh, Mike Ketch uh, takes the lead back. And Brad, just a New Jersey Lion, and Glenn follow the leader. Next question. Who was the first international president from New Jersey? Was it Dr. W.P. Woods, Melvin Jones, Benjamin Franklin Jones, or Herald P. Nutter. Red is W.P. Woods, blue, Melvin Jones, yellow, Benjamin Franklin Jones, and oh. Majority of you are right. Benjamin Franklin Jones was the first president from New Jersey who accepted the challenge of um, Helen Keller to become the Knights of Blind. He was an attorney, became a very distinguished judge, and actually in that decade and the decade after, ran Lions Club International pretty much. He was the powerhouse, just mm -hmm. like Harold Nutter was in the 50s. Yep, yep. Let's see the leading board. D, Brad, Just J. Lyon, Mike Etch, and Glenn are on the leaderboard. Next question. How many lion districts do we have in New Jersey? Red three, blue five, yellow 12, or green 16? How many lions district do we have in New Jersey? 
Yes, almost everyone is right. It is eight, it is three. Uh, we wish we would have 16 district. Uh, just a tidbit information that to, to be a, a viable district, we need to have 1,250 members and 35 clubs. So if we had 16 districts, we would have had a, a whole lot of members which would have loved to have. I thought that might have been a trick question with sub districts. Yeah. So the, uh, the leaderboard is D and the top, uh, Brad, Mike, Justin, J. Lyon, and Glenn are on the leaderboard. Next question. When was Lyon's centennial year? Was it in 1917, 1925, 1968, or 2017? Red, 1917, blue, 1925, yellow, 1968, and green, 2017. Yes, majority of you are right. The centennial was in 2017. Uh, the Lions Club was founded in 1917. So 100 years, it will be 2017. 1925, Helen Keller challenged Lions to be Knights of Blind. And 1968, the Lions Club International Foundation was formed. D is on fire. There is a streak of six correct answers. And we just changed the rest of the leaderboard up and down. Next question. What is our motto? Our motto is to be the global leader in community and humanitarian service, to empower lands, clubs, and volunteers and partners. We serve liberty, intelligence, our nation's safety. And almost all of you are, are right. So there seems to be not much change in the leaderboard. There is just a swap of second and third position. The next question. Where was the first Lions Club in New Jersey? Red Trenton, blue Camden, yellow Jersey City. Oops, everybody answered really quickly. No, <coughs> nobody has a doubt where it was. It is in Camden. So there is a little bit of change in the leaderboard. That is probably because Brad was a little slow on kicking on the uh, Camden. Next question. How many Lion members do we have in New Jersey? 1,400 plus, 4,000 plus, 200,000 plus, and 1.4 million. Yes, we do have 4,000 plus Lion members in um, New Jersey with three, three districts with 167 clubs. The, uh, now just an NJ Lion is on fire. He has a highest answer streak of six. Let me go to the next question. True or false? Leo is the youth wing of Lions Club. True, blue, false, red. Leo is the youth wing of Lions Club. Yes, all of you are right. So let's see who is on, on the leaderboard. D is Third, my catch is second, and on the podium is just an NJ Lion. Just an NJ Lion, and then we have runner-up Jen and Glenn 
just an NJ Lion, please let us know who you are in the chat box and uh, we will send you the pin. Back to you, Anu. <laughs> Is that pin still just an NJ Lion? So, I, I forgot to mention that uh, PCC Winster is also very competitive. So, <laughs> all right, uh, that was, uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone had fun. Uh, so once again, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we will have another new member orientation uh, next month on a different day. If you can spread the word, to the new Lion members in your district to attend, uh, that would be beneficial to the new Lions coming in. The Lions attending don't have to be really new because we are always learning something new from our uh, speakers and facilitators. I hope this session was informative and meaningful and uh, fun for you at the end. Thank you for joining and have a great night. You too. Good night, everybody, and thank you for attending. Bye. Thank Bye. you for the good information. Do we, have the date? Do we have the date for next month for the new member? We will announce it. It's not, we don't have it yet. Okay, only because we had six new members in the club. Okay, yeah, it, it will be uh, announced soon, Don. Okay, as long as it's not a Tuesday night, because unfortunately we meet on Tuesday. Yeah, it will not be either Tuesday or Thursday because we have done those days. So it will be on one of the other three days of the week, most thank likely a Monday. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All righty, thank you so much. Anu, I have a question. Um, is the format the same? Is the format the same at, at each orientation? Like, uh, it's similar, you know, the, we will have a different speaker, so they bring uh, bring their own style and, you know, sometimes okay. uh, their own stories to it, right? So the next one. I... For example, okay. for example, not everyone can come from the Camden Lions Club. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, yes, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I wanted to tell my members at my club, so I just wanted to let them know what to expect. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining. All right, good night. Thanks all. Good night, thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Oh, I was about to say thank you to uh, Jeff and uh, he logged out. I am sorry, uh, I didn't see this message, but uh, Rohel wanted me to talk about tomorrow's session. So uh, for anyone who is still out there, we have a My Lion refresher tomorrow. Uh, and if, if you would like to join, that would be awesome. Yeah, I will, I'll email it to people. Yeah, the Zoom info was earlier put in chat. But yes, please email it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you all. Bye. Bye.